this is Lucas from Enviral Design, and this is video number three in the GeoPix LED Pixel Mapper Walkthrough Guide. Um, I'm going to jump right into it. We've got lots to talk about in this video. Uh, this is kind of the heart and the soul of the application of GeoPix, and uh, there's a lot of components to it. Uh, but this is basically where the panels you create and define are laid out. As you see here in the viewport, we've got kind of a, a, just a test pattern laid out using the squares and the triangles. And I'm going to deselect these real quick and jump right into this left column over here. This is the first thing I want to talk about. Uh, here we have your panel selector. So this is your library of panels that you currently have defined uh, that are exported to disk. Uh, these are being read from a folder on your computer and that folder is specified here under panel definitions. We'll come back to the settings and I'll go into detail here in another video. Uh, but just know you can change this folder, but that's where it's being sourced from. Uh, so you pick a folder, yeah, I'm sorry, you pick a panel, you click on it, and then you have to pick a, a pixel controller and then a strip, like a physical output on, on that pixel controller, and that's where you place your panel when you click Add. Um, this window over here is your uh, signal chain outliner. So it shows you all the panels you have attached to your currently selected um, strip or pixel chain. Uh, by the way, just jump back over here into the settings really quick. Um, what you see up here is being populated by what you have enabled here in your device configuration manager. Uh, device 0 is the only one we have active. We have the Pixlite 4, which has four strips and 680 pixels per strip. So you'll notice that we have um, one, two, three, four physical strips or outputs, and each of those outputs um, if you read this text right here, it tells you how many LEDs you have and how many you're using currently and how many are left. So um, this is great. It tells you if you go over the limit and it'll start flashing, it'll warn you. Uh, I'll go and show you real quick. Let's just throw down a bunch of these. Um, so as you get closer to your limit, it starts to get more red. And of course, as you go over, it flashes uh, at you. So everything that goes past 680, will be truncated. Now it'll show up in the pixel map editor, but it will not show up anywhere else in the software. It's effectively not there. So uh, something to be aware of, make sure this always stays below and that it's not flashing. Um, in this outliner, by the way, you know, you just left click to select different tiles. You can select multiple ones by holding shift uh, and you can delete them. And uh, that's pretty much how that works jump back over here to three. So um, you've got a few other controls, select all, deselect all. Um, great if you want to select everything in that signal chain. Another way you can select everything, um, especially if you're just moving around big groups, is to hit the X, which is force select, which basically uh, is what I had on when this video started. It allows you to um, select everything at once. Very useful. Of course, remember to turn it off before you start doing other stuff. Um, <clears throat> let's see, viewport, navigation, if you hold Q, um, as I mentioned in the last video, holding Q and hovering over any UI element will give you help text, like a tool tip that kind of describes how to use that tool. Uh, if you hold it over the main canvas here, you're going to get your basic viewport control. So left mouse and drag will move selected panels. Uh, right mouse and drag will pan, move your camera around. Uh, middle mouse wheel will zoom the camera and clicking your middle mouse wheel will rotate panels clockwise while holding shift and doing the same thing will do it counterclockwise. Um, C will reset position to zero, 00, in other words home your camera, or I'm sorry your panel, H will reset your camera's position and um, shift will allow multiple selection of tiles, so on and so forth. You can read this at your own, um, at your own leisure. Uh, those are basic controls for the viewport. Uh, here we have there's nothing currently in it, but this is where you, you can load reference geometry. If you've got like a 3D file of a stage or of an art installation, uh, like a facade of some kind, you just want to lay out your panels according to this, something, just reference, right? This doesn't actually have any bearing on mapping. Um, you can load them in here quite easily. So I've got a, a mesh of a human character. I'm just going to drag it in here to show you. Uh, once you drag and drop and let go, it loads. This was just an FBX. I'm sorry, this was an OBJ, but you can use FBX or OBJ, and they both should load fine. Um, uh, if I jump over here in the visualizer, you can see um, the guy. He's just standing there. Um, 
that's all that is. It's just reference. I'll come back to the visualizer later, but for now, uh, that's how that works. Okay, uh, so on the right here, we have kind of the, the more more pressing tools. Uh, well, they're all important. These are these are more about saving and loading your workspace and uh, some more general tweaks as well as the coordinate type in for panels. So if you're moving panels around and you want to have like a pixel perfect layout and you know that the center of your panel should be at let's say 5.5 five, um, which isn't very far away from center because we're in centimeters so let's do 50. Uh, and so you can put that there and then you can of course put another panel and do negative 50 uh, and then put that at 50 as well and there you go and then of course once you have these two these two panels down as you expand your map you can of course just snap to those so you only need a couple panels to really anchor your design until you have a new floating uh, cluster in another area then you might need to type in those coordinates again um, another way to align panels um, so say you have a square and you really know that the left bottom left corner should be at a certain coordinate. Unfortunately, the way GeoPix works, it takes the centroid of each panel and that's what your coordinates manipulate. So the, the way you can, you can get this effect and get exactly the position you need is to deselect all your panels, uh, right? So you have no, no panel selected. You're going to notice that the text here changes from panel position to guide position automatically. And then you'll have this weird kind of glowing crosshair thing in the middle. Um, and when you start to left click and drag, you're now moving this around instead of your panel. Uh, and all this is is a snap point. So let's put this at uh, 75, 75. And then we'll select our panel again. You'll see the crosshair is still there. But when you hold S, and S is the shortcut for snapping to um, borders, you now have a snap target right there. So that's how you can align things to arbitrary points based on your border. Uh, this goes back to what I was saying in the last video about how important uh, the border is. Sometimes when you have a panel like this with a very clean, fixed, defined outline, you're going to really want to make sure that's measured correctly so that you can use it to snap to other objects. Otherwise, this pixel-perfect um, snap together kind of arrangement would not be possible. And these are, these are GeoPix products as well. Um, and these are physically mapped exactly as they are mapped in the, um, within the real product. So um, something to note. Okay, kind of jumping around here. Let's go and talk about saving and loading. So when you name your device over here, this device name is important because this is what your device is saved to disk as. Uh, let me go ahead and show you the folder where this is saved. And um, the folder is device layouts folder right here. So again, it's set to a relative path within the project folder I have set up. This is the same project folder you can download from the website, www.enviraldesign-design.com slash geopix. And of course, you can set this to a, an absolute path if you wish. I don't recommend it. I recommend sticking with uh, relative paths and I recommend putting your uh, geopix folder you know, directly off the C drive so that it's more portable when you move to other computers, stuff like that. Um, anyways, back to the naming convention. Let me uh, pull over Windows Explorer here. Okay, so we have in our project folder a uh, folder called device layouts. As you can see, that's what we've got here. Again, I'll come back to all this later in more detail. Let's just leave this device A so you can see what happens when we hit save. Hit save. Uh, it writes some files to disk. And you'll notice, <coughs> first off, the name of the folder this, this folder is your device folder for the device you currently have here. Um, and what it's doing is taking zero, the device number, underscore device name. Uh, so that way you can have the same name for multiple devices if you wish. Um, it just makes each name unique no matter what you type into that field. So if you open this folder, you're gonna see a few text files. Now how this works is not super important. Just realize that there's a text file for the overall device and there's a text file for each signal chain that basically uh, is your save and load file. So when you say you make several pixel maps and you change this to some other name and then maybe your um, your map is a little different, right? Uh, if you go back over here, 
and save this, we're going to get another folder, some other name, which is what we just saved out. So the way we load this, at first glance, you might think, oh, I'll just copy this whole name and I'll place it in here. But no, uh, you don't want to do that. What you want is just the actual name, not the number. That's important to remember. Uh, so we do this and we could type in device A. If we hit load, we're back to square one. This is what we saved in the other file. Um, and if we copy that, put it here, load, we're back to this pixel map. So that's how saving and loading works. Just remember that the number in front and the underscore do not go in the field here on the right. Okay, and of course clear is just what it says. It, it completely wipes out your entire pixel map. So if you do that, be sure you've, you've, um, you've saved it first. Also, before you click the program, a lot of things are saved when you close GeoPix, but your pixel map is not one of them. Um, and this is on purpose because you may have not wanted to save it and this shouldn't be automatically saved. So be sure to save your device layouts before you exit GeoPix, super important. All right, some other controls here. We've got the fade slider, um, fade video source. So this basically fades your, your, your content that's being mapped. And, and, and you'll notice too, uh, let's grab a panel out here on the edge. Uh, as you move this around, our, our content kind of expands and shrinks to fit the, um, the panels and where they are. So if you've got a big arrangement, this is going to kind of do its own thing and try to always put content on everything. You may want this, you may not. <clears throat> this usually isn't desirable in the end, but it's great while you're kind of setting things up uh, on the fly. The reason why it does this auto, auto scale thing is because we have this button checked here or enabled auto scale source. If we turn this off, we get uh, some new options here. <clears throat> and these, these fields are simply um, here to control background. So if we have 100 by 100, we get a little square, and all this does is scale our content. And of course, you can move it to, uh, say, 25. So for, for this shape, we might want to have a squash. We might not. You might be doing something more advanced with your content where uh, the left side of your video stream is, is one piece of content and the right side is another. And if you're using this kind of like uh, masking type setup, and we, we do get back into this later in the Smart Clip Editor, this is actually a big component of the software is, is utilizing these quadrants, if you will, uh, or making your own quadrants up. Um, this is one way you can kind of manually lock it down to a certain shape. And then you can still move your panel around and you can place it right on the edge if you want. Uh, there's a whole lot of things you can do with that. So again, we'll get back into how to use this and why this is useful, but uh, that that is something to be aware of. We'll leave auto scale on for now. It maintains aspect ratio. When you turn it off, you have to maintain the aspect ratio yourself. Okay, um, let's go real quick to geo groups. So if we select all here, let's go and first we have to make another geo group. We have default, which everything that you put onto the workspace is added to default group initially. Um, so when you, the reason why geo groups comes in handy, this has absolutely no bearing on mapping. This is purely a visualization tool. It comes into play in the 3D visualizer where you can group panels together and move them around uh, to make your stage or your layout look more uh, believable, right? You might have your pixels mapped on a very uh, dense UV mapped like surface, uh, but then you might have them more spread out on your stage or your art installation might be laid out differently. So this is a way to um, have it mapped one way, but in the visualizer, uh, lay it out a different way. Again, this is purely for the visualizer because uh, one real big advantage of the software of GeoPix is you can run an entire show, program an entire show without ever having to plug in a single light. Um, of course, that requires some level of, of organization and pre-planning with your mapping, uh, but you can still test your content, figure out your clips, even make your clips and your content and get all that stuff together and see what it's gonna look like. And so this is really why this is important for the visualizer. Uh, again, but you do this, you assign these things here in the pixel map editor. So with a long-winded uh, explanation. So basically you select your panels, you add them to a different geo group. Um, let's go ahead and do both of these actually. 
And I'm going to come back to this just to show you briefly. Um, these are your geo groups. Now you can select them and you can move them around. And you can rotate them. So that's pretty pretty useful if you if you want to try to match a, a certain layout that's not you can't do in your pixel map. So we'll come back to this in another video. So that is pretty much all of that. There's a button here for open 3D visualizer. If you want to put this in another monitor while you're working, you can do that. Be sure to close this when you're not using it. I mean it just uses you know some extra performance and you're gonna you're gonna take a hit on frame rate. As you can see here we're at um, 42, 43, when I close this, we jump back up to, to 60. So something to be aware of. Uh, all right, another really, really important tool, two more tools um, or aspects of this of this tab, uh, export pixel map. This is super important for smart clips. I'll get into why, but basically what this does is it exports a flattened version of your pixel map. In other words, it takes the coordinate of every LED attached to this pixel controller, it exports it to a file, um, and then this is loaded and used in smart clips. So you can have a smart clip that uh, uses one form of mapping, and then as you're fading to another clip, for example, that has different a different pixel map exported assigned to it, uh, you can basically fade from one sort of mapping to the other, which gives you a lot of flexibility in animation and, and animation design. And again, this is this is coming back to the abstract mapping stuff, which we're going to have to come back to in another video, um, because that's really a, a whole concept on its own to delve into. So again, very powerful. You just type a name, you export it, it saves it to disk, it saves it to uh, pixel maps. Um, as you see, we have some old old maps here. I'm going to get rid of these for the next video, but uh, again, these folders are specified here. Here's pixel maps folder. Again, it's relative to the project, so. Um, Okay, last thing we have, enter masking mode. This is a super, super useful, uh, fun kind of window. Basically, you can select your LEDs just by marquee selecting. And what this does for you is uh, it gives you the ability to, again, this, this is this is directly used in smart clothes. What this allows you to do is, is say, I want this animation to appear on these LEDs, but not on these LEDs. Uh, and this lets you literally get down the pixels and select by the pixel what LEDs you want to uh, have an animation show on and which ones you don't. So shift, very important to hold shift, uh, otherwise you lose your selection. Shift is to add, um, if nothing pressed, you're just gonna override whatever you have selected. Uh, if you select a bunch of stuff and hold control, you're gonna deselect whatever it is you select. So control deselects, shift uh, adds to selection, you know, Photoshop and normal 3D kind of Boolean operation modifiers. Uh, so you can do a lot with this. I mean, you can go through and outline the edges of all these panels. I think this is a really cool effect uh, that you can do. Uh, you can select stripes. I mean, there's just so much you can do. Uh, it really depends on the content. It depends on how you have it mapped. And this is where things really explode and let you be creative. Uh, because you can break away from that physical mapping, you can you can build masks for different things, and and sometimes an animation, when applied to the entire cluster, will look different when you only apply it to small slivers here and there. So, uh, it's something to experiment with. Again, there'll be a whole video just on this, on this stuff, and that'll be more of a kind of a long just, you know, experimentation video, and we'll get into that later. So, uh, anyways, you can clear. You can invert um, all useful tools. You can specify name, export. And of course, this goes uh, right onto the disk under pixel masks, which is again, something you specify in your settings. Uh, and that's pretty much it for this window. And remember, you can hold Q, hover over anything. You can get help documentation. And of course, um, there's also the help documentation window that you can pop up and put this on a separate monitor if you wish. Um, super helpful. And uh, that's it. That's it for Pixel Map Editor. Um, thanks for watching.